Well, the question is whether the online or digital world has reached uh, anywhere near full matur maturity. I don't think it has. Uh, it may be approaching that. So we're still exploring this new continent, this new age of the online and digital world. That quality journalism doesn't change, whatever the platform is, whether it's print, radio, television, online. Uh, that quality journalism with integrity, kind of wear out shoe leather, make telephone calls, go to strange faraway places with strange sounding names and try to be an honest broker of information is the core of being a, a professional journalist worthy of the name. Online has expanded this world greatly and I want there to be no misunderstanding. I, I think one, the future belongs to the web whether one likes it or not. Uh, it's already made a tremendous impact uh, on those of us who are human and on the world at large. It's almost limitless in its potential, not just for news, but for information, culture, education. The difficulty is holding everyone on it accountable. We all know the problem. It can be exploited uh, so easily for propaganda purposes, for lies, for smearing your neighbor or smearing other institutions. And so it's not transparent enough now with accountability. Television, radio, print all have a measure of accountability that the internet does not have in many instances. I see that as a major problem. In terms of being a working journalist, it is difficult these days. I have one foot in what you would call traditional or old media. I still do a one hour weekly news program on television have another foot in this wild west world <laughs> of, of blogging, Facebook, Twitter. So allocating one's time and energy in the right proportions is a constant challenge, but I welcome it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you certainly had a number of challenges over your, your long uh, and, and celebrated career. I wanted to, I guess, ask you a few memorable moments from that. Uh, first of all, what do you believe was the most important story that you covered, the most important story uh, of your career? What a good question. I'm drawing a breath because it's difficult to settle on one. I think one of the most important ongoing stories through the length of the 21st century and on beyond, and one that I began covering uh, when I was a younger reporter, is humans' exploration of the cosmos. Uh, history books 500 or 1,000 years from now, I think, will mark the 20th century of man beginning to explore the cosmos. Uh, the world of robot exploration is already reaching far beyond our own cosmos. So if I had to pick one story, uh, it might be that, because I do think it'll have a lasting effect, but uh, to mention two others, the, the growing gap between the haves and have-nots on a world level and on, in almost every nation of the world is a continuing story together with the exploding world population. These two things are connected in some ways. So they would be on my short list of the best stories, the most important stories of my time. And on a, a personal level, what was the story that really stayed with you? I want to answer the question, but I've been really very, very lucky to have been assigned to so many stories. But the early civil rights movement led by Dr. Martin Luther King in the United States. Uh, I covered that, one of the, really the first story I was assigned to by CBS News when I was there. Covering Dr. King and the civil rights movement changed me as a professional, it changed me as a person, and among the stories that have really stuck with me, that has been one. Uh, covering on scene the assassination of President John Kennedy and uh, the tragic uh, events of 9-11 would be on that list as well. But you know, there's so many stories. I can remember interviewing people high and low on the economic and social scale. Uh, interviewing a policeman on the beat after midnight alone walking the beat. I have a number of memorable such interviews or some single mother who's trying to make it with four or five kids trying to make ends meet uh, are also impressive. So it isn't just the big event Absolutely. Um, and then I guess finally to 
uh, give it a certain context to, to us here in the Middle East. Uh, you know, there's often been a, an interesting relationship that we have with uh, the United States, a sort of love-hate relationship, I would say. There are many things we love and many things that are difficult to deal with. What do you believe the United States' role is in the world today uh, as uh, diplomatic and as a world power? Of course my answer is the answer to an American. It should be taken in that context. It's difficult for us to see ourselves as other people see us. But um, what the United States of America tries to do is it tries to be a factor for good in the world. We make our mistakes, sometimes horrible mistakes, sometimes perhaps unforgivable errors. But in our ethos, that's what we're trying to do. How well or how poorly we've done it, each individual has done. That's what we're trying to do. And with our, our friends and alliances uh, in this part of the world, however it may seem, that at core is what we as a country are trying to do. Certainly oil and other natural resources are a vital part of what has molded the friendship and keeps the friendship. But as we go forward in the 21st century, and as China inevitably makes itself not only the world's, if not leading economic power, one of the world's leading economic powers, which already done, and gets military power commensurate with that economic power, that I think it's less the case that the United States' influence will fade. It may be diminished to some degree. I think it will remain. But meeting the challenge of how to be at one and the same time friends and competitors for the Chinese, hoping and praying that they never become foes, I think a version of that will go on with every country and people in the Middle East as well as we see China move, move forward. Uh, I know there's a school of thought that China will dominate the 21st century. Perhaps so, but you know, my experience as a reporter of it is that what we most expect frequently doesn't happen. What we least expect very often occurs.